I want to bring in filmmaker Dinesh D'Souza, best-selling author of Hillary's America. Dinesh, welcome to the program. I'm sure you just heard that last report, that a report of 2,000 teachers reporting racist comments directed against white students, that was suppressed. What's your comment on that? It seems to me that conservatives, Trump supporters in general, are still being branded racist by the left. Yeah, it's very clear that the face of bigotry has changed in America and the left is pretending like it hasn't. In other words, today, uh, white supremacy is a spent force. If the Ku Klux Klan were to organize a rally today, they'd be lucky to get 50 people and the protesters would outnumber them 10 to 1. This is very different from the Klan, say, a century ago, when they could mobilize tens of thousands of people to, mark in New York, to march in New York City, shouting racist slogans and burning crosses. Now, at that time, the Ku Klux Klan was, in a sense, the domestic terrorist arm of the Democratic Party. So when, the, when white supremacy was a real force, the Democrats were doing it. Now that it's a spent force, they're trying to blame it on the right. I, I, I feel that their analysis of America is completely off the mark. The left seems to believe that America is fundamentally, basically, a racist society. Um, I think that's completely wrong. I don't know what your experience is, but I think that's just flat out wrong. You say what? You know, I think that in their hearts, the, the left knows that it's not true. And my proof is the following. If someone were to, to accuse someone of being racist, they expect that person to become on the defensive, to apologize, to say that they're not, uh, to plead innocent. Now think about it. Only a non-racist would behave like that. If someone was truly a racist and proud of it, they would go, yeah, I'm a racist, so what? It's like if someone accuses me of being an Asian Indian, I would say, yeah, great, thank you very much. So the very fact that the left makes these accusations and the expectation that people will go on the defensive shows that they understand deep down that people are not racist. I'm sure you're familiar with the news this morning that Joe Biden says he may run again for the presidency in the year 2020. I'm sure you're also familiar with the, uh, the news that Keith Ellison wants to be chair of the DNC. He's far out on the left. This would seem to imply to me that the Democrats are in flat out disarray. What do you make of these, these news developments? I, I think that the Ellison, uh, the potential Ellison appointment is a really good example of the way in which bigotry has a new face in America today. We also saw from the WikiLeaks revelations that in private, uh, high-level Democratic operatives will now make slurs against Latinos, against Catholics, against evangelical Christians. So this is the new face of bigotry in America, and I think this poses perhaps a greater threat to the country uh, and to social cohesiveness than the old bugaboo of white supremacy. Do you think that times have really changed? Do you think that that election four weeks ago today was a real turning point for America and American culture? It was the, it's the biggest come from behind election in American history. Uh, not only was there a terrifying array of forces against Trump, but there was a revolt within his own party. Uh, it was, I think, against almost impossible odds that he pulled it off. And what was at stake is nothing less than all three branches of government. So the stakes could not have been higher. And this makes the victory all the more sweet. Dinesh D'Souza. It's been a long time since we saw you on the program. Do not be such a stranger in the future. We will see you again real soon. Thanks, Dinesh.